anyway, let's get going. So, um, you know, officially, let me welcome all of you and say good morning to you. Um, delighted to have your company. Delighted that so many of you have decided to join. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm going to introduce Sally to you in a moment or two, but um, just just to give you an overview of, of what we're what we're attempting to do here. So, Bright Spots is something that I came up with um, actually a very short time ago, and we've got it launched incredibly. Quickly, because we've got brilliant people like Bryony uh, to support the process. And um, the, the idea of Bright Spots is that we're in lockdown. Uh, we were told this morning by Chris Whitty that we're at the, at the height, the absolute, you know, uh, height of the pandemic, that it's as bad now as it's ever been. And obviously that means that uh, the news is fairly gloomy and we're all locked in and it's the middle of winter. So nothing could be more designed to make us feel uh, bad and I've certainly really struggled the last couple of weeks and I want to admit that because I think putting on a brave face and a shiny happy you know smiley face all the time um, it's just not true um, I feel really quite fearful and um, very reluctant to go out didn't feel like that so much during the first lockdown so I just want to express the, the fact that for, for me and I hope for a lot of you coming on here and, and you know meeting some other people seeing some other faces having something to do on a Monday morning um, rather than what you would normally be doing um, is, uh, is is a, a nice alternative and that's what we intend it to be uh, so we've got a program for the whole week um, as you know today is, is make up tomorrow is going to be about the, the the normal program of talks we've got a brilliant one tomorrow from somebody called Amanda Jane Ogden which I think you'll enjoy do come to that that's at four o'clock in the afternoon a zoom call Wednesdays we've got uh, a cookery session with somebody who's very passionate about uh, uh, healthy eating and uh, we'll show be showing recipes and so on Lenny and Thursdays tone up Trisha I can't believe that I've come up with the idea of appearing in lycra in public I mean it's ridiculous and the concept of me as some kind of fitness guru is beyond ridiculous but anyway we'll have some fun with that we're going to start it with um, a live conversation me and my personal trainer Lindsay uh, so that we can get some some thoughts from you as well about what you would like to see in that um, and then Friday by the way in future that will be a video uh, session but this week it's going to be live and on Friday we've got film club with a brilliant I, I love that film I just watched it uh, so it's Ruth Bader Ginsburg this wonderful wonderful woman in the states and what a good time to have that film just as everything that's been happening in America last week puts it into quite an interesting context of the law uh, as she was a Supreme Court Justice and a brilliant Supreme Court Justice. So we've got a packed program this week and we're going to start with uh, Makeup Magic and we've, we're starting with eyebrows. Now I'm going to introduce Sally to you and then we're going to have a, a bit of a discussion about why eyebrows, why we've chosen that to, as the first thing that we're going to talk about because uh, I think both of us feel it's quite important. So I've known Sally for some time now, I can't remember when I first met her and uh, I'm going to pass over to you, Sally. Just in, you know, tell us about yourself. Okay, thank you, Trisha. Good morning, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me. This is very nerve-wracking to me, actually. I, 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 many years ago, I actually did a, a radio slot, which was probably the most nerve-wracking thing. But then no one could see me, so actually that was much easier than this. So um, this has taken my mind off the bad news because I've been quite nervous this morning. But um, really, really lovely to, to see you all. I know I've met some of you in shops. A um, little bit about myself. Um, I live near Guildford, uh, I've got three sons. I didn't originally intend to get into the world of makeup, but I've always loved makeup from a, quite a young age. And when I was at university, I was the person that always did everybody else's makeup before the party. Um, when, I, when I left university, one of my first jobs was actually, I was a personnel officer for Max Factor Revlon down in Bournemouth. Um, and I got very interested in the 1980s in color analysis and style and image and makeup, which was very big at the time. Um, so while still working full time, I then did some part time training courses um, in color analysis and image and did some makeup uh, training at that stage. And I then set up my own little uh, image consultancy called New You, um, which I love. So I help ladies um, with their style and their makeup and colors. Um, so my very first makeup 
training course was actually with a company called Your True Colours. Uh, I then went to London and worked and um, trained with Joan Price. I don't know if any of you ever went to Joan Price's face place in London. Um, that was brilliant. So I did my original sort of makeup training there many, many years ago. Um, so I sort of run my own business um, with private clients and I also worked in companies as well. Um, I've got three sons um, who say they know way too much about makeup for, for their liking. But um, um, when the, the children were young, I also worked with a company called Nutrametics who um, did skincare and makeup. So that's when I sort of got more involved in skincare as well as makeup. And I ended up training and teaching people to run their own businesses. Um, I then added to my training, Nutrametics was pulled out of the UK, so I then went on to do a little bit more training on skincare, and I did facials, massage, and I also went into, into school. So I not only work with sort of more mature ladies, but I go and teach sort of 14, 15 year old girls about skincare and how to wear less makeup. Um, so I came across Look Fabulous Forever in about 2016, somebody said, oh, there's this amazing new makeup range that um, I think you'd be interested in, Sally, because at that time I was in my 50s, a lot of my clients were, and I thought that it would be interesting to see. I was a little bit sceptical, but I ordered some products, absolutely loved them, loved the prime, loved all of them. Um, and then I sort of, I think we I quite know how we originally got into contact, but I wanted to see more of the products. Um, so I have actually worked with Look Fabulous Forever in various roles um, since about 2017. So I've done some of the videos on the website, you might see me. My hair was a bit shorter then. It's actually desperate, desperate for a cut, but I was about to have it cut before lockdown, so it's growing very long. I've done some of the photo shoots and I helped with their TV adverts. Um, and I've done quite a bit of training with the fantastic Look Fabulous Forever at Home ladies um, and in the shop. So I've worked in, in, in both shops, done bridal fairs. So I've got to know Trisha and the products really, really well. Um, and my passion is teaching ordinary people how to feel confident about themselves through makeup, through colours, through just feeling good about themselves. And I think at a time like now, particularly when a lot of us are wearing masks, actually our eyes are very important, our, um, particularly at brows and eyes, we'll come on to that. Um, but I think for me, putting my makeup on in the morning, listening to the radio is my bit of sanctuary. And I absolutely love doing it. It makes me feel good when everything else around us is falling, falling apart. It's a, it's a bit of me time and a bit of, bit of art that happens to be on my face. So that's me. Brilliant, Sally. I think you can tell from that uh, from from that biography of Sally that uh, she's got enormous amount of experience. And what I really love about her is that she has this extra dimension of colour analysis and so on. Because one of the things that I want to do in the coming weeks is is spend quite a lot of time, uh, you know, so, some of the time talking about style, and you know, not always talking about makeup. So it's the whole caboodle, really, the whole package um, of of looking your absolutely most fabulous best. Um, as you get older. There's another advantage with Sally, um, besides the fact that she's a bit younger than I am, so she's, she can speak from a slightly younger, younger perspective. Um, uh, the other thing is she's warm toned. So I'm cool toned, she's warm toned, which means that what we can do for all of you is show you the range of colours um, in, in terms of the makeup we're we're talking about um so that you know if you if you happen to be warm toned obviously sally can help you and if you happen to be cool toned then i can help you uh, perhaps a bit better anyway eyebrows so um the first thing i want to say right, the, the way that we're going to do this let me give you the the sort of program i thought we'd start by by a big a little discussion between sally and i about why eyebrows matter um, we're then going to talk about natural brows. So how do you enhance what you naturally have and get the best look that you can get? Uh, if you won't, don't want to go to the second thing that I want to talk about, which is, um, I would say, other brow definitions. So things that you might want to pursue, which are a bit more permanent, perhaps things like microblading and so on. So Sally's done some uh, uh, some investigation into that and uh, knows more a lot more about that than I do anyway. So we're going to discuss that. And then um, at the end, we'll have a, a brief discussion about other facial hair. So something that... 
I'm having much more of a problem. Sometimes I, I've got these little black, uh, black hairs that grow under my nose as if I'm trying to emulate a sort of Hitlerian moustache, which is incredibly uh, distressing, I have to say. I can only see them in my magnifying mirror, but they still distress me. So we'll have a little chat about that and some of the, um, you know, some, some of the ideas that maybe you've got as to, as to what helps you. I know there are various products on the market for that. So let's start with why eyebrows matter. Now, um, I don't know whether you, you've all got me on speaker view, um, at me and then when Sally speaks, she's on speaker view because you can see quite clearly, you know, then, then you've got a pretty good view of my face. And I don't know whether when you look at my face, what's the first thing that you see, the first thing that you notice. Now, I'm kind of hoping that you notice that I'm wearing quite a nice bright lipstick and that that lipstick sort of works quite well with my, you know, two lally earrings and my, and my purple top. What I hope you aren't noticing first are my eyebrows. Now, I say that for a very good reason, because I don't think when we read a face, we, we should be noticing the eyebrows first. Um, and the reason for that is that eyebrows should be a given you know, they just happen to be there. They're important and they're important for lots of reasons. They give uh, symmetry to the face. We have two of them. Now they don't have to be twins, but they do have to be sisters. They do have to bear some relationship to each other. Um, so they add symmetry. They also add proportion to the face. So we see faces in thirds, you know, here, here, and here. And your makeup, should balance those thirds out so that you get a pleasing whole without one part being too dominant. So proportion symmetry. Um, and I, I, as I said, I think there's been a fashion for the last few, uh, I mean, it's probably been going on for a couple of years or so. It's come from the Kardashians in the States and it has been a, a fashion for incredibly dominant brows so that you really are seeing the brows as being the first thing that you notice. Now, I feel, I don't know whether Sally does too, I want her to join in with this conversation now, that that is quite a difficult look for an older face. So what do you think, Sally? I do. I th it is a very personal thing. Um, and I think certainly when I go into schools and talk to the younger girls, um, all I see at the moment are a sea of brows, <laughs> just like you say. Um, and I think it can be, particularly for an older face, too strong a brow can just take over because we tend to lose a bit of pigmentation, as we know, as we get older. And if you have one area that is screaming out, then it takes away. I think the whole idea of balance in your face is really, really important. You'll get a much softer, gentler look. Um, and just like with colors, if somebody says, you know, gosh, that's an amazing color on you, I don't always think that it's necessarily the right one. It might be that that color is screaming too much at you. So if the first thing, as Trisha said, is you see our brows, then I totally agree. Um, I just, it was quite interesting when I was um, doing a little bit of research for today that um, I thought I went, a bit of a pun here, went on my research browser, browsing brows. And um, the history of brows is fascinating. Um, just, just when you go back to prehistoric man, prehistoric man, actually had a very large brow ridge um, that didn't have so which was bone and it may have evolved to lose this by changes in our brain size of our brains grew and our face shape changed but that allowed us to subsequently um, basically the, the bone went and it became muscle and brows which allowed us to move and do all these amazing um, sort of facial expressions and that then gave um, prehistoric man an evolutionary edge because they could sort of be, um, they could communicate with each other without speaking. So I thought that was really interesting that actually our brows, although you know, they, they, they show a whole sign of, of us and that's why it's important to have some brows but not too thick because you can, you can show frowning, you can show smiling, you can sympathy and empathy. Um, going through all the history of brows, they, they've kind of gone in and out through the ages. My, my most interesting one was um, eyebrow wigs. In the 18th century, um, dark full brows were desirable as they are now, but thank goodness we're not doing what they did because what they used to do, because in the previous sort of phase, um, Elizabethan brows um, 
ladies wanted to pluck their brows to have very high foreheads to look like um, Queen Elizabeth I. So over plucking and the use of lead toxic um, makeup had meant later on, often ladies couldn't put brows on. And then when they became fashionable again, they used to actually um, trap mice and get their hair, the fur of mice and make them into mice pelts and glue them on. So, um, yeah, amazing. So, I think well, that's going one stage too far. Thank goodness we no longer have to have mouse pelts <laughs> on our faces. Um, just on the Neanderthal look, I, I sometimes think my eyebrows, now I'm in my 70s, have become Neanderthal. You know, they, they are wiry and they poke in all sorts of different uh, directions. It's, it's like they're, they're some kind of throwback thing in ev evolutionary times. It's like, why are these brows doing what they're doing now? Let's come on to the first bit that I really want to explore with you, which is natural brows. Now, I, I, I think you, most of you watching this will know that I'm a great believer uh, in as far as you can uh, going the route of, of a, a natural route, um, i.e. I don't you know, I personally wouldn't let anybody near my face with a syringe or a scalpel. I don't want to have, uh, you know, any of that sort of uh, injections and, and fillers and facelifts and, and goodness knows what. I know some people do, fine, that's a personal choice, but I don't want it. And it's the same with brows. Uh, so when I was um, devising the, the, the whole um, range for Look Fabulous Forever, I worked with this cosmetic manufacturer and every single product, uh, my idea was that it should somehow be better for women who are older. You know, that was my starting point. And I, I said to him, this has to have a reason for being in the range that it's better when you're older to be using this particular thing. Now the brow uh, shape that, we, that we've got was something that took a heck of a long time for, for them to develop. So I basically came from the concept of what a lot of women do is they use a pencil. So with a pencil, they draw on their brows. And a pencil tends to look very artificial because it gives you a single line. Now, I was watching my sister-in-law who'd lost her brows because of a, a, a thyroid deficiency. And she, her hair was fine. Her eye, she still had eyelashes, but she completely lost what had once been good brows. And she was drawing them on like a child would draw a pair of eyebrows with a pencil. And it didn't look very good. So I thought, why don't we take it up a, up a notch and go from, you know, sketching on the brows to painting the brows as if you're a portrait painter. And a portrait painter does something very subtle and is trying to reproduce the, you know, the, the, the illusion of a natural brow with hair. So I came up with the brow shape. And my idea was a kind of liquid paint and a very, very fine brush. And that then, I'm gonna do this on the back of my hand, you could, doing strokes like this, light feathery strokes, you could actually reproduce the illusion of brow hair uh, by doing that. Now I'm gonna pass over to Sally and she is going to demonstrate this on herself so that you can actually see the effect on Sally of, uh, of the brow shape. So Sally, just talk us through this because um, the, as, as I said, the idea is that you can, you can create something, fill in any gaps, you can get a better shape with your eyebrows. Maybe you could talk a little bit about eyebrow shape and measuring and so on and so forth. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was, the very first time I used this, um, I was blown away. I used it actually on a client who had very few eyebrows. And I am actually fairly lucky. Um, I can't see myself on large, let me just, just put it on. I want to speak of you. Yes, I have. Got it on, see, that's it. I'm still Can you not see yourself? I'm seeing you as large and me still as small, but <laughs> I don't know why we can do that, which could be a little bit tricky when I'm trying to, anyway, I'll give it a go. So the top tip with this product is, because um, I know from working in the shop that a lot of ladies are frightened of this product, and it takes a little bit of practice, but there are ways to, to make it work so, so easily. Um, and the first thing to do is to realize that it is a liquid, um, and so you need to shake it, okay? How and where to put your eyebrows? This little product, this is called a spoolie brush. This is our brush number six. 
six, I believe. Um, this is an essential tool, um, whether you have brows or whether you don't have brows. Now, I'm actually reasonably lucky um, in that I've, I've still got reasonable brows. I've got nothing on my brows at the moment. I don't know, Brian, whether you can get it so that I can have, I can't seem to get myself on. I don't think we can because when you're talking, it will assume you're talking to Trisha, so Trisha will appear big on your screen. So sorry, I don't think we can. Oh, right. Well, I might have to move the mirror a little bit closer. Yeah, that's no problem. You do what you've got to do. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I thought I might be able to see myself on the screen, but I might have to move my mirror. Okay. So, spoolie brush is really good. So, if you've got brows, then I think it's actually... There are different ways to do makeup. I always like to do my foundation first, if I'm wearing foundation. A lot of makeup artists do eyes completely first. Um, but if you've got no brows, then I think it's better to do your foundation so that your, your foundation is a, is a base, okay? If you've got absolutely no brows at all, then I think before doing eye makeup, it's good to put your brows on. So you've got a sort of a, a framework in which to know where to put eyeshadow. If like me, you've got reasonable brows, what I tend to do is do my eyeshadow first and then do my brows so I know how much or how little to put on. So it's, a, it's up to you. Um, I've put my eye makeup on now, um, apart from my brows. So where should your brows start? Where should they finish? The spoolie brush is a really good tool to help you. So the first thing I do is take it from my nose and the, if you can see, where it, at the top, it should be where your brow starts, just here, okay? Then, where should your brows finish? Now, this is where a lot of ladies lose brows at the edge. Um, I have lost about a centimeter. So, corner of the nose to the corner of the eye, you can see that there is a, I don't know if you can see that, there is a little gap um, of about a centimeter where I am missing a little bit of brow. Um, and that's what I'm going to help to show you to pull in. Where should they be at their highest? Um, again, if you take the corner of your nose, look straight on and go through the middle of your iris, that top bit should be sort of the arch, the highest part. And what some ladies can do, if you've got absolutely no brows, you can use this product and you can do it sort of point, putting three dots using this process three dots as a start point, an end point, and a middle point. And then you're actually filling in the dots. Don't put the dots on too heavily though, um, because then you will get this great big dot there that you have to get rid of. So, first thing I do is to brush. Now the spoolie brush is a wonderful brush for just grooming brows, for helping to exfoliate. Sometimes you get a little bit of buildup of skin and debris around your brows. So actually really, really brushing up is wonderful and you can see I've got just a few little gaps in my brows and they're not too bad but you'll, they'll hopefully look a little bit different when I put the brow um, paint on. When you start you then if you brush down you can then actually see your natural top of the brow and then you can decide where you need to fill in. So step one shape. Step two, remember to always have it upright. You do not want it to, um, to spill on your clothes. What you don't want to do with this product, particularly if it's the first time you use it, is to take it out and just go for it because you will then freak because it will look too dark, you'll panic and you, you just will think, I'm never going to use this again. What I do, as Trisha said, is I actually wipe the excess off either on my hand or on a tissue, just so that there's slightly less on the, on the brush to start with. Now, where to start? If you have got brows, some brow, I tend to find not starting right in the, this bit, because if there's a lot of product on the brush still, and you put it right by the nose area, it can look too heavy. So I tend to start in, let's just go for my little, my little points. So I'll do a little point, little point there. Point there, and my highest point is there. So I tend to start at the top, and I do little short. If you sort of struggle as well um, holding the brush, if you rest your little finger onto your cheek to hold you steady, can you see that with the mirror? Is that, is that you can just see that? Okay, 
it really clearly. It's fine, Sally. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Just, I can't see in the, in, the, in the screen. So little short strokes, little feather. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then what I do is actually go out. Now, you don't want really heavy product here, but you need it to go to the point where it should finish. The bit that you often lose, just filling in. This is much easier said than done doing this. Trisha makes it look so easy doing it in front of you. So then what's left? Now, when you're doing the middle bit, you'll notice that brows tend to go upwards. And actually what you want to therefore do is to fill slightly upwards rather than just going across. So just build up as much as you want. I'm only going to put a little bit on to start with because I want to show you that you don't have to go mad. So at the moment that looks a bit dark, but it still looks a little bit uneven. So this is where this product is amazing. You then just brush. Very, and you've gone, as I have done. Little top tip actually, which I should have done before. When I'm putting my makeup on, this will make you laugh. Velcro rollers, I actually, because I've got a fringe that often gets in the way, I find that sticking my Velcro roller in while I'm doing my makeup, this will look really, really glamorous for the world. <laughs> but actually, not only does that help me with my hair, I sometimes put some in the back. So I'm doing a bit of a, a double, doing my hair while I'm doing it. So if I do that, you might be able to see a bit better as well. So I don't know if you can already see that's just a little bit darker. One, can you see one eye looks slightly darker than the other? Yes, it does. And what, what I want to stress here, Sally, is that th this is supposed to be quite subtle. Yes. Now that we've got two colours, you're using brown. I'm using brown, yeah. I use the grey. And you can see that Sally is quite fair. In fact, she's, you know, she's got blonde hair and she's got quite fair, fairish eyebrows. And people say, oh, the brown is too dark. I wish you'd get a, a, a paler one. Now, I've done hundreds and hundreds of makeovers, as has Sally, on all different eyebrows. And if you use the brush, you can always get the colour to the right degree of intensity for your coloration. And if you put it, if it's too heavy, just use the brush and just, just knock it back. Right. And it really, you know, it really does work. I get so frustrated when people say, oh, it's much too dark for me. Well, it's too dark for you because you're putting too much on. So take, take the excess off on the back of your hand and then just very, very, very lightly then use the brush. And I can almost promise you that you will get it to the right intensity of colour. Absolutely. I mean, in the shops, we've had every shade of eyebrow coming in. And with the two products, you can work with absolutely everybody. Um, I think if you're new to brows and you're not used to seeing yourself with brows, I think that's the same thing with lipstick. When you put somebody into a, a, a brighter lipstick, it's a massive shock when you're looking at yourself. And I always say, when you've done your makeup, always hold a mirror at arm's length and see yourself at a distance. Because when you're doing makeup close up, it can be actually, it doesn't look right. The whole proportion doesn't look right. So if you're new to brows, um, or your brows have faded over the years and you, you know you're thinking I can't possibly it's just too scary try the technique with the spoolie brush or you could even just do one step before that um, which is to use a little bit it doesn't last but just to give you the idea of what it will look like um, our because I've got brown sort of brown color the taupe is a brilliant eyeshadow and a lot of ladies actually like to use a little bit of taupe on their brows as well doesn't last because this is waterproof that's what i love about this you know you can wear it and know it's not going to come off during the day you're not going to have one brow on and one brow off like i've got now um, but if you're brand new and just want to experiment actually and i sometimes even do a little bit of taupe over my green back brow i'll just show you i'm just putting it's just a another way of just adding a little bit more definition. I sometimes do both actually if I want a little bit more colour but don't want to add a little bit more bring back brow. Just a little bit of taupe. Um, for ladies that are using the grey one you can use charcoal eyeshadow or the soft grey. They both have a really good, because they're matte colours, they're a really good effect um, on brows so you can just and you're using um, that with a, a, a number eight wedge brush, aren't you? I'm using a wedge brush. You could also use the um, lip brush 
as well, but I quite like the wedge brush for this as I use this also for the eyeliner. We'll come that, to that another day, I'm sure. But um, so if you're, if you're sort of, is, if it's one step too far, then try, if you've got taupe, is a really good thing just to try to start with, um, or just to soften over the brow, bring back brow. But this product, use, if you use the spoolie brush, you can't go wrong with it. You really can't, even if you've got absolutely no brows, because you can, as Trisha said, actually physically, because it's so fine, paint in the lines in the, in the, in the right direction. Um, and that's what's so clever, which you cannot do that with a pencil. You can't do it with any other products that are out there. So it's unique. Shall we just see from Bryony whether there are any um, some questions at this point? Um, let's go, let's go to Bryony and see what questions are. Hello. Yes, we do have a few questions. Um, so Jackie wants to know: Is there anything? No, sorry. Is it true that your eyebrows seem to stop or slow down in their growth as you get older? Yes. I I suspect they do. Um, and, and if you've plucked and plucked and plucked and plucked your eyebrows in the past so that now they're pretty sparse. I mean, my eyebrows have definitely got very sparse, the old I've got. Ellie was saying how she has a centimetre short. I've got about, I, don't, I can't do centimetres, but I've got about half an inch missing. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, my eyebrows pretty much stop there. Uh, so I, you know, I use the brow shape uh, to, to, to fill in the, in that. So um, the thing is not to get scared and you know, not to get scared about the fact that your eyebrows, you know, don't grow back or that, or that they're getting sparser because honestly, with the right products used in the right way, you can, you can compensate for that very, very easily. The other thing that I'd say is that I'm pretty ruthless plucking out those errant hairs, those Neanderthal hairs. So the white ones, the ones that are growing in the wrong direction, the ones that, you know, just, just look wrong and actually disrupt the natural arc of my eyebrows so I'm pretty ruthless I've got a 10 times magnifying mirror which is terrifying when you look in it you can see all the you know hairy horrors um, but I just pluck them out because I know that I can use brow shape and get a pretty good natural look uh, with that any other question Bryony? Yes a couple more um, Maureen wants to know is there anything that can make her brows thicker and do you know if it works I think she means like a, a supplement or something that she can take to actually increase the the thickness of her brows. Um, I don't know whether Sally you want to answer yeah. that. Yes I and mean, first of all going back to the previous question we do we do our eyebrows do stop growing for various reasons um, aging is one of them you get thinning hair um, because you're in your 40s really when, when the levels of estrogen start to fall um, as Trisha said over plucking um, can lead to follicle trauma basically depending on how much you've over plucked your brows. Stress, um, thyroid problems, nutritional deficiencies, all sorts of things can contribute. There are lots and lots of um, different ways that, and you know you can go down the route of good old-fashioned castor oil. Some people swear by putting a little bit of castor oil meat on their brows actually um, which is a natural remedy. Castor bean um, is full of a, a fatty acid that actually helps to fight inflammation and helps with, it's got things like vitamin E um, and something called ristinoleic acid. So that's a real sort of natural remedy. You can buy serums. Um, and I have actually used this, um, UK Lash. They do a UK brow, um, which has again got vitamins and peptides, um, which help, but they, they say they stimulate keratin growth. Um, so that you would see results. With these sort of serums, you see results in about eight to 12 weeks. So it's not instant. Um, so you do have to persevere, but definitely worth a try. Um, there are also, if you go to a dermatologist, there's all sorts of things that you can, the more money you want to throw at it, you can, you can have things such as um, prescription supplements, topical medication, platelet rich plasma injections, if you want them. Um, and people are even having eyebrow hair transplants I, you know we're going back to the mouse again aren't we <laughs> sticking the mouse on but um i actually personally think that keeping them well groomed um and actually brushing them through and keeping them moist and keeping them you know some people just put vaseline but castor oil oils i think are a little bit better um than i'm not a great vaseline girl myself yeah. But keeping them groomed is really good because um, it gets rid of all that debris as well. So if you're going to put a serum on, if you're going to buy and go for something like one of the serums, make sure that you use a spoolie brush to brush first so that there's no dead skin around there so that the serum penetrates better. 
Okay, perfect. And Jill just wants to know whether the um, brow shape is waterproof. Yeah, can I come into that one? Um, yes, if when I've got these these lines on the back of my hand, I wash my hands a lot these days because uh, of what's going on with the, the virus. Um, those stripes will still be on the back of my hand through that hand washing, even with soap. Um, so I, I would have to cleanse that off now with a cleanser. Um, so if you go in the shower, if you go swimming, and you've you've used the brow shape it won't run you won't look like rudy giuliani you know with his <laughs> hair dye running down his, his face you, your, your brows won't start to sort of run down your face um and they will still be there after you've swum after you've uh, you've been in the shower so it's um it is designed once it's dry to stay put and um i i never have any problem with mine and and at night when i'm removing my eye makeup i have to remove my brows so i have to use the, the uh, eye makeup remover, lip paper, oh, yeah. as you expect I use, um, on a pad and I have to rub it off. So um, so that's to answer your question. Yes, it is waterproof. Perfect. Um, yeah. And then just one final question. Um, someone has a big freckle across their eyebrow. Should they be painting across the freckle? I don't know, Sally, what, what would you say with that? Freckle? I, I, I'd need to do painting across it. Depends how, how dark. Yes, I think I would um, without seeing it. You just, I mean, it's not, I actually personally love freckles, so um, I think, you know, you should celebrate its freckles, but if it, you can try and, and, and eat, you just want to try, if you can, through using the, the bring back brow to even out as much as you can, so without seeing it, um, I'm not sure whether I can help, but we can always, you, know, you can always send a, a picture through. Yeah, through absolutely, if you want to send a picture to marketing yeah. looksfabulousforever.com, we can have a look for it for yeah, you. Yeah, that, that, that would work, that would work well. Um, okay. Can I just say one more thing about this, about this product? Because I do know that some ladies like to use eyeliner. I've had a few clients that say they've used this. I know we shouldn't, and Trisha will be really cross with me for saying this, but they have used it as top liquid eyeliner. And it is actually really, really easy to do that because of the brush. So if you are a, a sort of an, a, a, an eyeliner lady, doing that, but still using it, the powder as well to soften that can make a really nice defined line above your lashes. I have to say, I have done that on, on the odd occasion. Oh, it does, have you? Ah, there you go. <laughs> I will admit, uh, <laughs> it, it does work really well. Uh, so that's that's brilliant. So that that's all our tips, as many as we can give you for uh, for natural brows. Um, I think some of you have mentioned. I've, I've been seeing in the chat. Yes, we have got an offer on it this week. Um, it's five pounds off the brow brow shape set and Bryony just check this for me but I think the code is brows b-r-o-w-s yeah the code is brows yeah it's got no m minimum spend or anything so if no, you no minimum spend so it's just it is the five pounds off the brow shape set with the code brow so you save an extra five pounds because you're already saving money buying it as a set anyway so it's an extra five pounds yeah, so it's a good deal. And um, by set, we mean you get the brush, you get the spoolie yeah. brush, I think it's essential. You know, I, I actually don't like it when people buy the brow shape without the, the brush, because I think you need the brush. Let, let's just have a chat about other brow definitions now. Let, let's talk about um, more radical stuff. Now, I know some people uh, like this. We've had threads on, um, on super troopers about it. Oh, you know, I swear by tattooing and I have microblading and I, you know, I think they look amazing and all that kind of thing. Fair enough, um, if that's what you like and that's what you want. But um, some thoughts from Sally, because I know that you know a bit, bit more about this than I do. I, I know very little about it. Okay, well, there's various procedures that you can have done to your brows other than using bring back brow. Um, obviously you can actually go to a beautician and have them tinted. Um, which, uh, or you can even do that yourself. Again, that lasts maybe a, a few weeks um, and then wears off. But again, you need to know someone reputable because you, anything that's going to last a few weeks on your brows, you want to make sure it's in the right place and at the right, the right colour. Um, I've had ladies come to me that have had, you know, it's too red and it looks, it looks obviously a very red brown, which is not their natural colour. Um, there's something called HD brows, which is where you go along, you have your, your eyebrows cleansed, you have them tinted, then you have them waxed and threaded and plucked and um, a serum is offered, and then they put a pencil on over the top and clear gel. So it's like a bespoke package. Again, that's, you know, will last a little while. A little bit more permanent, as Trisha said, um, a lot of ladies are now going in for, for microblading. Now this is, it is under the umbrella of tattooing, so microblading is a sort of a semi-permanent treatment, lasts from one to three years, um, and pigment is implanted 
into the skin with a very fine needle, which is handheld, it's a handheld tool. Um, and so it very much depends on your technician as to how well she's holding her handheld tool and where she's putting it to create hair-like strokes that are under, so they're cutting into the skin and implanting. Um, and you would need probably every year or every six months per year, a little bit of a top up because it does fade. Um, I've seen some good and I've seen some not so good. I had one lady who actually had a double brow. She came to me for a makeup lesson and she was in a very, very distressed because her natural brow was still there and she had um, microblading and it was just too high. So she literally had two brows. Um, so be very, very, and you know, it can be brilliant, but make sure you get recommendations. You go and you go to someone that you absolutely trust if you're going to go down this route because you're going to have to live with it for up to three years. Um, permanent makeup. So some people say, what's the difference between microblading and eyebrow tattoos? Because there is a difference. You can actually have permanent makeup, which will last much longer. Um, and that can be done on eyes, lips as well, um, and brows. And actually using um, proper cosmetic tattooing machines. So it's not a handheld product um, uh, machine and it lasts longer because the ink is placed deeper. So that's even scarier in my views. There is one more phase um, craze that's just hit. The younger girls are starting to have brow lamination. Have you heard of that one, Trisha? Brow lamination? No, it sounds terrifying. Yeah, and that's the, basically where you perm your brows. So you create, um, Brian might know about this, it started in Russia and you brush up feathery brows and you basically perm them, which breaks down the hair and then they set it with perming lotion so that the brows are sort of slightly more feathered and upright. That, to me, is even scarier. Um, I don't know. I, I personally, like Trisha, have never wanted to go down the microblading route um, because it's a it's a, quite a big step. But there, I have seen I've seen it done well. And I've seen it done not so well. I really have both. So just make sure if you're going to go down that route, you realise what it is you're doing, and you're absolutely sure. But the technician is really well trained and has done many, many, many. Let's see her work or his work before, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I totally, totally support what Sally's just saying there. One of the things that really worries me, and um, I have written about this in blogs and things, is that the, the whole cosmetic treatment industry is unregulated. Now, that is, you know, you think about that, that this is terrifying to me that I could tomorrow. Uh, buy some equipment from the internet and set myself up to microblade, microblade, offer microblading um, eyebrows. I, I could do that. Nobody would stop me. If I, if I did damage to somebody, it would be uh, perfectly legal for me to have done the procedure. Although, of course, I'd need lots of insurance because the person would probably want to sue me. I've no regulation. It's almost like, you know, you go to the doctor and uh, he hasn't spent five years being trained um, you know, he's going to give you all sorts of advice and so on and so forth. I think it, I, I can't stress this enough. It horrifies me. So um, people can do all sorts of quite invasive procedures on your body, give you injections, um, push fillers into your skin, uh, do all sorts of um, physical, um, you know, treatments as well and have no qualifications, no, almost no training and absolutely no regulation attached to it. Uh, and that's why I don't like it. I feel that it's, um, it's like the wild west and a lot of it's snake oil, you know, it's not going to do what it, uh, what it's claiming to do anyway. So I'll get off my soapbox and stop ranting, but I, I, I just want to say to all of you, do touch this with quite a long barge pole. And uh, as Sally said, the solution is personal recommendation and then a lot of investigation on the therapist that you're going to, to make sure that they know what they're doing. I was um, standing beside, uh, behind quite a long way away from somebody in a queue the other day and she turned around and somebody had put her eyebrows on uh, and I think they were tattooed on and they were different level. So one was up here and one was down here. Um, she, absolutely appalling and and that's it you know that's that's it for for a long time now and uh, there's nothing she can do about it so it terrifies me just a quick chat uh, before we finish on um other facial hair so um just just some thoughts about this now this is my my trusty you know pair of um tweezers 
Um, I've had them for a long time. I'm not going to recommend them as such. I think Tweezer Man are quite a, quite a good uh, brand if you want good tweezers. I think they're, they're, the, they're, they're the, um, the recommended brand. Um, I like these because they're very precise and I use a magnifying mirror. Now I'm pretty ruthless. I get, I get quite a lot of hair here at the side of my mouth. I didn't used to, but I do now. Some of that hair is quite long, some of it is white. Um, and I also can feel on my chin when I've got hairs growing through. And again, I'll be sitting there watching the television and think, oh my God, what on earth is that? And I can put, you know, I can pull it and it's there. So I'll go and get my tweezers almost immediately and just ruthlessly pluck them out. Um, so I'm, I use magnifying mirror tweezers and I just, tr you know, pull out. Now, some people say, you know, you pull one hair out and three grows in its, grow in its place, but that's counterintuitive. If we pluck our eyebrows, and they actually gradually disappear. Every time you pull a hair out, you're actually weakening the follicle. Uh, so hopefully you're actually, you know, you, you're, you're making it less likely uh, to, um, to be a problem in the future. So I don't think, you know, I think you, you can confidently tweezer away any of those horrible hairs, hairy bits that you've got. I think you need to be vigilant. The, the, other, the thing is that other people have better eyesight than you, so they can see the hairs when you can't. <laughs> It's like that's the frightening thing I think because I've got these things here and this little Hitlerian thing under here and then I've got the things on my chin sometimes and I get them on my moles and I think I can't see them um, but my, in my magnifying mirror I can but other people can see them and think, oh god Trisha she's got really hairy these days <laughs> so, I don't know why but uh, it's quite I find it quite scary anyway um, so you know don't be afraid of plucking them out now I am also not an expert in, in other things. I, I think there's a little machine that you can buy. Sally, do you know anything about this that takes away the, the sort of peach fuzz on your face or? or like, like an epilator. Yes, it's like an epilator. I think there is something. I don't know if, if anybody watching this, uh, still watching this, has got one and uses it, you know, do indicate that in the chat function and uh, we'll come to you perhaps and, uh, and you can tell us about it. But um, I know there's been a thread on Super Troopers with a discussion about it and it, apparently it's very good, but I'm not helping because I'm not giving you the name of it. Um, no, I, I, know, I know exactly that um, I've also read about it, but I haven't used it myself. I have, I have personally, when I went through the menopause, I had a uh, it's a hormonal change. I suddenly had this crop of really dark hair coming out of this little patch of my chin, which was quite distressing. Um, and I used, I used the, the, as Trisha said, the tweezer man tweezers because I love the fact that they're slanted and very, very precise and got a nice big handle. Um, but I actually went because I, I couldn't kind of keep control of it. Um, I did go and have a, a series of electrolyte. I had electrolysis, um, which. I actually found it took longer than I thought it was going to take. I thought I'd go along and just, you know, a couple of times it was gone. Um, the thing about these sort of hair removal, permanent hair removal treatments is that hair grows in different stages. So um, it only will remove the hair permanently if it's in the anagen growth stage of hair goes through different cycles. So you're not going to get all your hairs going through that particular stage at once. Um, but I actually found I needed probably nearly a year to get rid of it, um, um, in the, and, but, but it's now gone. They have gone, they haven't come back. So it was really, really good. Yeah, so, um, you know, there are treatments out there for sure. Uh, I, I think people vary in, in their degree of hairiness. Okay. So, you know, some people have strong, wiry hair and, um, and, and, you know, there is a massive challenge around that. So definitely uh, I'm, I'm at the other end of the spectrum, really. I, I'm, you know, I, I think these hairs have come now because of my age, because of hormone changes and all that sort of thing, postmenopausal and so on. It's to do with that natural process, and I hate it because I, I think uh, I think it's I think sprouting hair out of a face is um, is associated with old women, isn't it? You know, it's it's not a good look. Um, so we had a question from Catherine. One second, let me just find that. Um, so Catherine wants to know: Is there any advice for eyebrows for? ladies who wear glasses absolutely I think it's really sorry Trish you might should I just mention it I no you go ahead Sally go ahead right. yeah I think it's really important to see where your glasses sit um so I've got my so I've got two pairs of reading glasses let me show you I've got some sort of 
Um, so these glasses are quite small ones with my reading glasses um, and my eyebrows. I, I think it's important, really important if you wear glasses to make sure that your brows um, are prominent. Some people have their glasses that actually sit, these glasses, completely different shape, actually sit pretty much on my, you can't see my brows, can you there? I actually, <laughs> and I actually prefer seeing my brows um, with, with glasses, because I just think that creates more, more shape. So see where your glasses actually sit on your face and in, in relation to your natural brow line. Um, that's important to see whether, whether they're hidden or not. It's important to, I think it's particularly important to wear eye makeup when you wear glasses. Anyway, mm. we can talk about that at another session. But um, yes, look at the shape of your frame to see if that's sort of relating to your natural shape of eye, eyebrows. I'm not a great believer in really dramatically changing the shape of your brows. It's very difficult to do that well if you've already got brows there. Obviously, yeah. if you started from nothing, then you can create whatever shape you want, pretty much. Um, um, yeah, can I just come in and say something about glasses? Yeah. Um, I have, uh, with some of the women that I did makeovers on in the shop who wear glasses, uh, glasses are also a framing device. So I, I feel quite strongly that if you wear glasses, make them an important part of your look and your and the effect that you're trying to create and what is brilliant about glasses is that they do give you symmetry proportion balance and framing and if you get the right shape that suits well suits your face well again we can cover this on a different term um, on a different call perhaps um, then you, you don't have to worry quite so much about your eyebrows, but I do agree with Sally. If your eyebrows show, then, you know, make sure they're a nice shape and that they actually complement the shape of your glasses. I know I had somebody come in and um, she had very boring glasses on and they, they, they were doing nothing to add to her face. They were just utilitarian features. You know, she could see better when she was wearing them and I actually said to her have you ever thought about having a slightly more, more dramatic glasses or you know or frames that have a bit more interest in them and she went off and did that got some new glasses and, and, and uh, frames and so on and sent me a photograph and she looked terrific and I don't worry you know we a lot of us wear I don't wear glasses um, I'm quite lucky I'm, I'm short-sighted so I don't need them for normal uh, viewing but if you do wear glasses all the time just make them part of your look you know take a leaf out of good old Prue Lee's book I mean she does a fantastic job of looking I think she looks terrific and she you know she don't, never apologizes for those glasses she makes them a part of the her overall uh, style which I think is is a, a terrific thing to do and I love to see women wearing um, you know interesting and, and uh, bold glasses especially when they're uh, they really suit that person's face. Um, we had uh, we had a, a Trisha talk from Delia Chiaro in um, Italy, didn't we, a few weeks ago? She's a university lecturer in uh, Bologna, and she's got some amazing black frame glasses. Uh, if you missed that, have a look at, uh, at that on YouTube. And um, she's got some terrific glasses, and uh, she looks like a real intellectual in those glasses, which of course is what she is. She gave us a great talk about humour, so it was it was lovely. I think we're more or less coming to the end now are there uh, were there any other questions there Brian? I did have two more questions I think we kind of covered a question from Sarah she wanted to have some advice on how to treat facial hair above the jawline chin and upper lip and I think we probably covered that with the... somebody put up a thing in that I just caught um, about mm -hmm. waxing so of course yes if you've got a thorough you know some kind of therapy that you you go to somebody who, who waxes for you an expert again in in that process uh, and of course you can I, I think you could buy um depilators is that right the you know cream and so on but I know nothing about that so I can't yeah. which but, actually leads on to the final question Jilly um has messaged saying that she has really bad rosacea and blonde facial hair and she wanted to know what um depilatory you would recommend but I'm not do, do we know much about that I don't know enough about it. Um, Sally, have you got anything to add to that? Again, with rosacea, yeah, I'm without, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally trained in all of the methods, but one thing I would say is threading, actually, which is another form of um, waxing. A lot of ladies find that that is good if they've got sensitive skin, um, because you're not actually putting anything on, you're just using the cotton. It's an amazing, amazing treatment, actually, the way that, they've, I don't know whether threading might be something that you could possibly consider because it's no, there's no chemical, there's no actual intervention other than, and it works on fairly short hair as well. 
Um, and I noticed the ladies put on about laser. I mean, that laser, obviously you're going down another route, but that's again, uh, you know, a permanent and a very, very good, a little bit more expensive, but can be very worthwhile on facial hair too. Um, so there are lots and lots of different things you can do. Um, yeah, waxing. I, I've had my eyebrows waxed many a time actually. And that, if you go to someone good, really good for, and perhaps your top, top um, lip as well, that can be really, really effective. But again, you need to make sure your therapist your um, future therapist is good at it because you can get inflammation and redness and ingrown hairs and all sorts of things. So, brilliant, Sally. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you all of you for, for being with us. Um, we've had somewhere between I don't know 150 and nearly 170 people at various uh, points in the call, and those of you who stuck with us uh, for the for the whole hour. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've uh, I've enjoyed it very much, and uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, Sally has a lot. Uh, a lot of knowledge and information to give you and um, as I said we, we will build this uh, series of masterclasses over the weeks. I think next week we decided we'd look at colour. Um, so incredibly important to uh, all of us and uh, the importance of colour on an older face cannot be overstated um, it just it's it's like I, I always feel it's like a light from within when you start to add color to an older face it just literally brings the face to life and uh, it, it, it lights up uh, it lights up the, uh, uh, the whole effect so we, you've got that to look forward to next week so we Monday again at this time do come and join us and uh, thank you as I said for for being part of the audience there'd be no point in Sally and I just talking to ourselves and Bryony doing, <laughs> doing her bit if you weren't there so we really appreciate it when you come in as audience don't forget tomorrow afternoon we've got Amanda Jane Ogden and she's going to give a Trisha talk and she does one-to-one -one, uh, teaching of quilting and uh, she's a textile designer and expert, lives in County Durham. Uh, she's got a huge, huge range of knowledge. So do come in to listen to her. I think she's going to have some really interesting things to say. So hopefully you'll come back tomorrow afternoon and we'll see you then. Uh, meanwhile, um, I'm going to go, I've, I've made some soup. <laughs> so um, I'm uh, getting hungry and I'm sure you are too. So again, thanks so much and bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.